Right now on CBS News Texas Sunday morning, severe storms ripped through North Texas. From Sanger to Pilot Point, two people have been killed, multiple people are injured, and homes have been destroyed. Rescue and recovery efforts are underway right now, and we are live in Sanger this morning to see the damage left behind. Good morning and thank you for joining us for CBS News Texas Sunday morning. I'm Karen Borda. Robbie has the day off. We are following breaking news out of Cook County. There is extensive tornado damage at the AP Travel Center off I-35 in Valley View, just north of Denton County. The Cook County Sheriff says nearly 60 people have been hurt at that location and at least two people have died at a nearby mobile home park where at least 60 or excuse me, 50 to 75 homes have been destroyed. At least two fatalities so far. Um, sadly, there's probably going to be more. Uh, like I said, it is ongoing right now. We have a lot of a lot of crews and a lot of assets back over here in, the, in that area, making their way through it. And uh, you know, we we pray uh, for those lost, but also that we can uh, still find find the injured and, and get help to. We are still working to find out the total number of people injured in both Cook and Denton counties. Multiple law enforcement agencies from across North Texas have responded to this area as search and rescue efforts continue. And take a look at this video from our storm chaser, Jason McLaughlin. This is a tornado touching down in Windthurst in Archer County last night. It's about an hour and a half northwest of Fort Worth. Now in Sanger, people are waking up to intense tornado damage from overnight. At a local marina, boats and docks are now destroyed. And a nearby RV park is waking up to the severe damage left behind. Our Don White is at that RV park in Sanger, just north of DFW. And Don, now that the sun is up, people are waking up. What are you seeing and how are the locals coping? Karen, I'm here at the Lake Ray Roberts Marina RV Park where you can see the devastation here is unimaginable. We have this RV that is actually turned over on its side. And if you check behind me, the debris field goes for more than half a mile. I talked to the owner off camera and he told me that he was able to evacuate pretty much everyone out of here. The only thing that is missing is one woman is still looking for her cat and I'm joined now by two people who were here when everything happened Frank and Donald so Frank um, if you would be able to tell me what it was like last night when the tornado touched down and where you were well I was in a walk-in uh, cooler at the restaurant here on the at the marina uh, the owner came around honking his horn, warning everybody to get out. I don't know why I heeded that warning, but glad I did. <laughs> my, I grabbed my dog. We had it for there, and it just the the it was just unbelievable the sound of all the destruction going on around us. Uh, that our that that walk-in cooler didn't move. That was the most secure structure you could have gone to, and I come out and everything is destroyed, just absolutely destroyed. In a matter of two minutes, it's gone. Everything is gone. But I got my dog and I got me. You said that you sold your house and you actually moved here yeah, to live. Yeah, I lived here. I live here. And, you know, I kind of got tired of the taxes <laughs> and the high insurance. And so I ch I've been here since uh, December. And, uh, and this happens. I, I guess God doesn't like RV parks. <laughs> and that's that was your RV right yeah. back there. Yes, that's yeah, that that's that's it. it. It's it's gone. It's all gone. I'm finding a lot of my stuff all in the debris field. You know, I'm finding my Red Bulls <laughs> out here. Um, I did say my Irish whiskey survived. <laughs> well, we're glad that you and your 20 year old Maltese are yes. OK. Yes, yeah, Samson and I we're alive. Got the clothes on my back and the, a leash for him, and that's and I was able to get some of his blankets out of the thing, and we slept in my car. The car is destroyed, also. It, it, it must have picked up my car and just spun it because the whole back end is all twisted up, of and it's a big Lincoln, and it's all twisted up. Yeah. 
Well, and I know that b both of you have insurance, which we are glad oh. to hear. And Donald, if you can tell me where you were and what you saw and heard. I was in my camper and I heard the noise, a really loud noise coming. I heard the horn honking and I went ahead and rolled in my bedroom, which is a slide out. And uh, as soon as I did, I went ahead and laid on the bed because the camper, I felt the walls start vibrating. And at that point, it picked up my whole camper over the pickup and sailed it, spun is what we're imagining, what it had to have spun, and then it um, slammed into another camper and it exploded. And um, how I survived, I have no idea. What went through your mind when this all was happening? Well, it's just, uh, it's, it's hard to describe, but the best thing I could say is the, I wasn't, I wasn't upset. I was just trying to get someplace safe and there was no place to go. You just have to fall down on the mattress and hang on for the ride. So that's all I can do. And uh, just glad to be here. I'm glad I've lived through some tough times in the last five years. It's, I just keep picking up the pieces and, and moving forward. Well, thank you both for, for joining us, and we are glad that both of you are okay. And tonight on CBS News Texas, I will have more from here and how people are picking up the pieces. Live in Sanger, Dawn White, CBS News Texas. Yes, Dawn, that's absolutely incredible. You mean you just talked to two people, and their stories are absolutely riveting. The, the man who was in his trailer, in his camper, when it was tossed around and it, when it smashed into another camper, I mean, Absolutely unbelievable. Car! We're in it! We're in it! I can't do anything! It's like a punch to the stomach, really. I mean, this is my community. In a matter of two minutes, it's gone. Everything is gone. How I survived, I have no idea. When you look at the devastation and you want to sit down and cry. We pray uh, for those lost, but also that we can uh, still find find the injured and, and get help to The images, they're devastating and widespread. At least seven people are dead, including two children over in Cook County after powerful storms and at least one tornado tore across North Texas overnight. We just learned about three of the victims who died in the storms. Laura Esparza, a mother, and two of her young children, Miranda and Marco Esparza. So those people we have confirmed were killed in the storm. The storm slamming into our northern counties right around 11 o'clock last night. Places like Sanger, Valley View, and Salina were some of the hardest hit. The National Weather Service is out today surveying the storm damage, trying to really gauge how strong the storm was. It appears to have been an uninterrupted storm for at least 100 miles. Again, at least seven people were killed, including two children. So among the places destroyed, home a gas station, a marina on Lake Ray Roberts, and an RV park. So just moments ago, Governor Greg Abbott over in Cook County, he held a press conference with leaders. That press conference just wrapping up, but here is some of the points that they said. Being here as we report on this devastating tragedy, Texans across the state are saddened by the tragic loss of life and the storms that have now claimed at least seven lives. There's no information that there's more than that who will be found deceased, but we know at least seven have lost their lives. Another, at least about 100 people have been injured. It's hard to tell with certainty right now on that number, uh, but based upon those have already reported as well as information from local officials. We estimate there being close to 100 people who were injured. More than 200 homes and structures were listed as destroyed. Another more than 120 were listed as damaged. I'll be shocked if those numbers are not increased uh, as further assessments are made. And Right behind us is a gas station which has now gone viral across the country. I saw the harrowing video inside the Valley View gas station as the tornado passed through with the people stockpiled in there clinging to safety. It truly is a miracle that everybody 
made it through the devastation that destroyed that gas station that they made it out alive. Kennedy has been a harrowing week with lives lost, property reduced to rubble. The hopes and dreams of Texas families and small businesses have literally been crushed by storm after storm. This storm that we are talking about right now is a storm where the tornadic activity traversed about 50 miles. That may not include even further areas around here where there is even more damage being reported. At the same time that we are going through the heart-wrenching loss of life, including the heartbreak of a family losing a two-year-old and a five-year-old child. When they woke up yesterday, they had no way of knowing how the family would be literally crushed by this horrific storm. But we've seen amidst all of this tragedy some heroism. Heroism by people behind me, heroism by people who will never be known. We've had first responders step up and be involved in rescuing people, perhaps saving lives. The volunteer fire departments in this region uh, have received rave reviews for their response to these storms. Texas Task Force One, which is involved in search and rescue operations, uh, has been their uh, typical uh, outstanding self. Law enforcement has stepped up and helped out. Local, state, and federal officials have all been a part of this solution process. But in typical Texas fashion, we have friends and neighbors and fellow Texans just helping out one another. And that's what we have come to see time and again in our state. It's one thing that makes Texas so exceptional. And that's the character of our fellow Texans who will drop everything to help out their fellow residents. It's a reminder that our lives, they're not measured by the adversity that we face. Instead, they're measured by how we respond to that adversity. Texans are responding with our typical care, love, and generosity that we have for one another. We know that it's not only this region that we're in right now that's been devastated by destructive storms. It's happened all across the state. Before today, I've already declared a disaster in 102 counties across the state. At this moment, I'm gonna add four more counties to that count. I've just signed a disaster declaration that adds Denton, Collin, Cook, and Montague counties to the state disaster declaration. So there are now 106 Texas counties subject to a gubernatorial disaster declaration. That's more than a third of all Texas counties that are now subject to a disaster declaration. Earlier today, I spoke with the FEMA administrator. It's the second time in a week that I've spoken with her. She has pledged support to work with the state, local communities, and our residents as we go through the process of healing and recovering. I also want to thank Tony Robinson. Tony, where are you? Right here. T Tony Robinson is, is the regional administrator for FEMA. Tony is from and lives in Denton County. We're proud to have you from Denton County, Tony, and thank you for everything that you've done. Uh, the Texas Division of, of Emergency Management has provided a rapid response to all of these locations around the entire state of Texas that have been affected by these storms. They've been saving and protecting lives and property. They've been assisting local governments with all of their local needs and assisting local residents with their very profound challenges. 
the Texas Department of Transportation has been working nonstop since this storm hit, working to clear lanes, remove debris, and provide temporary traffic signals where needed. The Texas Department of Public Safety, of course, is always involved uh, in a response like this, ensuring that they're able to maintain safety and security on our streets and in our neighborhoods. The Texas Military Department, the Texas National Guard, they're involved in helping our local communities respond in various different ways. And the Texas Forest Service uh, has stepped up and are helping out uh, to uh, clear trees as well as other debris to make sure that the debris removal process will be able to accelerate. I also want to thank some uh, elected officials who are with us here today, including Congressman Michael Burgess, Repre State Representatives uh, Spiller and Stuckey, Cook County Judge Roan, Cook County Sheriff Sappington, uh, Texas Division of Emergency Management Assistant Chief Kevin Starbuck. We now move into a different stage as we respond to this devastating storm. Texas will remain engaged and involved with these communities until that process is completed. The first thing we're doing, which is going on as we speak, and that is to make a final round uh, of search and rescue operations just to see if there's anybody else out there who needs to be rescued. Then we move to full aid, support, and supplies where people need immediate assistance. And we have great volunteer organizations that stepped up and started providing that overnight. For example, on aid and supplies, we have Valley View Methodist Church providing food and water. There may be some others providing food and water also at the same time, I would not be surprised. There is an urgent need for housing for all these people who have been displaced. Temporarily, the First Baptist Church Community Center uh, is uh, taking a lead in providing that as well as the Red Cross. Uh, and very importantly, uh, anybody, this is information that you as the media need to be a part of it in getting out, and that is anybody who's been harmed in any way uh, by the storm, if you have insurance, you need to make sure you contact your insurance company ASAP, get them involved in the process. Uh, the other thing is we as a state, uh, whether it be state of Texas, Division of Emergency Management, or local officials, all of us are working together on a similar project, uh, and that is to make damage assessments. In order for Texas and this region to be able to qualify for federal assistance, we have to submit information to FEMA. To Governor about Greg Abbott here uh, addressing the situation out in Cook County. I want to get you some of the highlights of some of the things that were mentioned there. First and foremost, uh, we ought to let you know that uh, he is confirming that there are seven deaths in that area. A hundred people are injured. Of those seven deaths, we're told that two of them are children. Two hundred homes have been destroyed. One hundred and twenty of them have been damaged. And, and also to add to that, Governor Greg Abbott, he says that 106 counties in Texas are under a disaster declaration right now. That's more than a third of Texas counties as a whole. So that's just incredible showing how destructive the storm season has been. And he just added four new counties today, Cook, Denton, Collin and Monte counties all in the North Texas area. For now, we do want to take you out live to some of the communities right in the storm's paths. Hard hit. We know that we have team coverage for you. We have crews spread out, getting eyes on all of the damage that has been done. We're also hearing some heartbreaking stories of loss. Our Marvin Hurst is in Valley View this evening with the prayers and the pain. Marvin. Good evening to you, Ken. Yeah, you know, I heard the governor talking about the loss of life, and this is a property where that happened. Uh, this piece of land belongs to the Esparza family. You can see the junk here. It looks like junk now, but uh, I was just imagining just a little while ago that the, the pieces of wood, the pieces of fence, the, the tin, the, the paper, the clothing, all of it was together yesterday at this time. All of this was a part of their life. As a matter of fact, I'm told that that's the man of the house's truck over there. But I want to show you over here on top of this tree limb. How does this happen unless it's mother nature? That is the truck of uh, the woman who died in that house, Laura Esparza, uh, just sitting up there. So before the night was over, before the sun could come up, there was already death on this land. Green Meadow Drive in Valley View looks like an inventory list for disaster. 
a house with the roof hanging off, tin curled in the backyard of another, truck slushed with mud, a ceiling fan dangling where the top of the home no longer exists. I thought I was gonna be dead the way the air was sucking me up and I was holding the door real tight. I said, this is the end for me. My kitchen, you don't see no more kitchen. Yolanda Vasquez says her home is destroyed. Yeah, I was here like this. She held on to the door until the tornado moved through. Across the field where this truck is crushed about 10 Saturday night. And then while uh, he was walking by, he just heard screaming, screaming and screaming, and he went to where it, he heard the screaming from. The wind left behind casualties. He was scared, screaming, crying when he saw them. Her uncle, a part of a neighborhood rescue crew, saw one dead child, and when he turned around, that same neighbor lost more. And he found his wife and his son deceased. According to the Cook County Sheriff, there are multiple fatalities. Children and adults make up the dead. So me and my five kids and my husband went in the closet and just heard a lot of noise and we felt the house move. As families grieve, others try to catch their breath. And now my husband can't work because his, his work stuff is gone. Left here to recover on Green Meadow Drive. I mean, my house is destroyed, but we're alive. That's the good thing. But uh, that's all I can say because I know there's a lot of dead people up there that they didn't make it. Back here live, I, I wanted you to take a look. Uh, this is on the side of the Esparza property. Those are their neighbors next to them on the other street. Every piece of material that you see there, every piece of plywood, piece of clothing, piece of plastic, all of it a part of someone's life that yesterday was just so together. And today they're trying to pick up those pieces and move on with another life. And it's going to be a difficult task. Live in Valley View, Marvin Hurst, CBS News, Texas. There's so much devastation out there, Marvin. Uh, thank you very much for that live report. Obviously, we are thinking of all of those families. We know that some North Texas families are also in need of a place to stay tonight. That storm destroyed several homes, especially out in Salina. And that's where we find our chief meteorologist, Scott Padgett. He is out there uh, tonight among the, uh, the damage out there. Set the scene for us there, Scott. Uh, what are you seeing over on the side of town where you're standing? Uh, Ken, the devastation is just evident. As you can see, homes just torn apart here in Salina. About 36 homes on Prairie Meadow Lane off of uh, 289 and County Road 100 have just been ripped apart. I want to show you this too. You can see that from this home here, uh, the roof gone, uh, insulation out. But look how this board was just driven into the ground by the intense winds. And on the ground, we also see some scarring. So uh, right here, as you can see right there, that's some scarring of the winds that were whipping around the debris just kind of pushing them into the ground. Uh, you can see there off into my distance, uh, a flagpole bent over that probably on this Memorial Day weekend would have an American flag. Not there, but just behind it, a home almost completely leveled. It is destroyed. Uh, went up to talk to the owners there. Uh, just wanting to ask, you know, how are they coping with this? And we're respecting their wishes. They didn't want to talk. Uh, the, the woman that lived there said devastating. And you can see why. She no longer has a home. All the memories, all this safe space that they were in has now been destroyed. Uh, so you can see down uh, the street, Another home roof completely ripped off, but then just behind that a home just pretty much untouched. Uh, so it's interesting how this tornado just ripped its way on through this home here across the street. Uh, we did find out that everyone is safe. Uh, the grandmother did have to get pulled from the debris, all the rubble of her home. Uh, all the uh, animals as well were safe. So you can see in the trees off to the distance, uh, all of the debris that was pushed that way as the tornado moved its way on through. Uh, so this is uh, an area that everyone's coming together. The community is very tight knit uh, and all day today we've seen volunteers coming in. We've seen neighbor helping neighbor. The Salvation Army has been here as well as the American Red Cross. Lowe's dropped off supplies, uh, dropped off water as well as Home Depot. So, uh, you know, everyone's coming together. We hate for it to happen like this, but it's what Texans do. Texans helping Texans and neighbor helping neighbor. It's going to take a long time, Ken, for uh, this to get cleaned up and the memories are going to last even longer. 
Yeah, uh, Scott, well put there. Uh, obviously, that is an area there in Salina that is going to continue the kind of effort that you just described, neighbors helping neighbors. But uh, as you mentioned, you know, here in Texas, that's what we do. So our thoughts and prayers clearly with those folks out there in yeah. Salina as well. Thank you, Scott. Also, we want to bring in Chief Meter or, sorry, Meteorologist Jeff Ray. And Jeff, you and I were here last night following the track of this tornado. First, it hit Valley View, then it went over Lake Ray Roberts, and then uh, all the way to Collin County. So this was a very long track. So can you break down the actual path this dangerous tornado took? Yeah, Amelia, we're talking about one supercell that went about 135 miles. And I've tracked velocity here so you can see the tornado signature. So let's pick it up about 930 last night and this is the storm the supercell that was developing right over Montague County in Bowie and it immediately started producing tornado warnings and then basically for the next uh, three and a half hours nothing but tornado warnings coming out of this supercell and there it is over Valley View in the Sanger area across 35 and you can see the multiple vorticities that were going on when it was approaching Anna and Melissa as well and it died out pretty much over part parts of Commerce County, but not before again trying to form some rotation there. On a wide view, you can see the track of the supercell uh, from Commerce on. This is it right here in reflectivity, and, and you can see its massive nature. It's usually about the size of a county, and it went from Montague over into parts of Delta County, so that total path was uh, about 135 uh, miles. So it was a tremendous storm through the night, four hours it was going on there and it was just something to uh, cover uh, cover because we knew being at night it was just going to be very deadly. Welcome back everyone as we continue to provide you a special hour long coverage of a storm that ripped through North Texas yesterday. This is a live look right now at Salina. You can see some of the damage there over in Collin County. Of course that uh, that storm hitting the hardest over in Valley View in Cook County. Uh, we're told seven deaths as a result. Uh, more than 100 people injured. Two of those seven deaths are children. We wish we had better news to report to you at this hour, but unfortunately that is uh, the situation. And as you can see there, uh, the recovery efforts are going to take quite uh, a, some time and it's going to take quite the manpower to help these folks uh, get a little bit uh, be better on their feet. Uh, and of course, uh, we're going to dedicate the rest of this hour here to remembering the victims of the storm as well as the uh, communities that are now recovering. Absolutely. And also, since the storm hit last night, we have just had social media video after social media video rolling into our newsroom. So I want to share some incredible video I saw on social media last night of a woman filming herself driving inside that very tornado that struck Valley View last night. I actually got a hold of her this morning. Thankfully, she and her friend are okay, but she was able to share that exact video with us. Take a look at this. It's her. We're in it. We're in it. I can't do anything! Cover your head. Cover your head. So you can see right there the just the force of the storm. Valencia Gill says she and her friend Brenda were driving home from a concert in Valley View when she got caught in that storm. Arguably, that is the very tornado that struck that town. You can see the strong winds were just blowing up dust and debris. You even heard in that video Brenda telling her friend Valencia to duck down, get undercover. Obviously, these two are very shaken up when I spoke to them over the phone, but they are OK. I'm actually planning on speaking with Valencia later on tonight and we'll share more of her story tonight at 10. Well, the images of the devastation from Valley View are heartbreaking. You can see the storm also tore through an RV park in Denton County. All of the RVs there are damaged or quite frankly just gone, but everyone thankfully is alive. Don White is in Sanger now with the story of how two people survived this storm. Sydney Leopard fled the Lake Ray Roberts Marina RV Park after a tornado warning late Saturday night. She couldn't believe her eyes when she returned. When we drove up, Charles goes, the bus is gone. I said, where could a 40 foot bus be gone to? Sydney and her husband lived in that RV at this park for the past 10 years. I have stuff that's scattered all the way to the lake. <laughs> the couple finally found their home, now nothing more than a pile of debris. I think I was just in shock mostly. It was the devastation was just 
unreal. It's a roller coaster of emotions as Sydney sifts through her mangled belongings. You look at stuff that's kind of comical and you have to laugh about it and then you look at the devastation and you want to sit down and cry. Sydney found a few sentimental items mixed in the rubble, but otherwise she has to start over. Basically everything is destroyed. We found some clothing. We have found some pictures, uh, some jewelry. But other than that, everything's gone. A man and his 20 year old dog lived in what was this RV. It was next to this deck over here. His car is down there and everything he owns is a total loss. We could hear it all around us. It was just a freight train went right through. Frank Saltisiak and his Maltese Samson, who was blind and deaf, hid in the park's restaurant cooler along with several other people. All of a sudden we felt the air gets sucked right out and so we went running in and when I was running to the cooler I could see the ceiling heave up. The pair and everyone else at the RV park are putting back the pieces of their lives. This is my home. You know, I, I, I started living doing the RV life, you know, Samson and I, and we were loving it. We will more than likely get another type of RV and we won't live here because it's not going to be a, I mean, there, it's going to be such devastation for them to repair. It'll be a long time. Sydney's belongings may be lost. The sofa and stuff was here, but we have yet to find the sofa. But what she found is a community moving from a surge of destruction to an appreciation for life. In Sanger, Dawn White, CBS News, Texas. Well, it is clear, very obvious uh, that folks there, the need is going to be great for those that have been directly impacted by last night's devastating tornado recovery and cleanup, of course, going to take a lot of time there. So if you're watching at home and you would like to help, you actually can. CBS News Texas has teamed up with our local Salvation Army to help our neighbors in need. Your donations will help provide essential services, food and assistance to our friends struggling in the wake of that storm last night. So all you have to do is scan the QR code that you see on your screen there, or you can go directly to their website, Salvation Army NTX.org, and you can donate anything that you would like. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. We are continuing our coverage of deadly storms, including at least one tornado tearing through North Texas overnight. You can see the devastating damage behind us. I mean, it just keeps going through multiple counties in our North Texas area. Let's get right to the information that we have learned within the last hour here, especially from a news conference that was given by Texas Governor Greg Abbott. The storm, uh, the tornado where it formed, it started in Monte County. We know that and then it produced the twister, which hit Valley View. There's also damage north of Sanger. The tornado went over Lake Ray Hubbards and then into Collin County. It tore through homes in Salina, too. And we've also learned about three of the victims. Laura Esparza, a mother, and her two children, Miranda and Marco, they all died in that tornado last night. So, oh my gosh, our thoughts and prayers are with them. They're among now seven killed, at least seven confirmed killed from that tornado. Around 100 people hurt when the storm moved through Cook, Denton, and Collin counties. Texas task force, the state search and rescue crew has been going house to house to make sure there are no more victims they need to be aware of. About 30 minutes ago, we also brought you that live press conference from Governor Greg Abbott. He signed a disaster declaration for Colin Cook, Denton and Montague counties. Now let's get to Marvin Hurst, who is live now out in Valley View, where much of that damage and death and destruction has been reported. And Marvin, take us through what you've been seeing, the heartbreaking scene you've been seeing seeing all day. Absolutely, Amelia. Let me just say I just got through speaking with Texas Task Force. They said they have just completed their second run through here. They did one last night and they just got through doing the other. So they just left the scene. So I want to clarify something about the Esparza property. Their home started over here on this side of the street. On this side of the street, you can see the bike there. You can see the poles there knocked down by the, the tornado. And then I just want to make sure nobody hits me here as I walk across the street. Then the storm 
pushed everything over here. So there you have their, their vehicles, you have other people's vehicles, and this is uh, unfortunately where they, uh, neighbors say that they could hear screams. They could hear screams. Uh, Guadalupe uh, was telling me that her father came down here with a, a, a group that instantly formed. You know how these things happen when, when emergencies occur. People just jump into action, and they jumped into action and they tried uh, saving them, trying to rescue them from under the debris or wherever they found them. Uh, he, she says that her father started screaming because he saw one of the children dead. It was the daughter because he kept saying, your daughter, your daughter, your daughter. He was saying that to the father. And then there were, he turned around and he says he saw the mother and the son. They were under something too. So that father did survive and he has another son. He survived. I talked to a cousin and confirmed that they have a GoFundMe up for funeral expenses. Can you imagine losing everything that you have here, the material stuff, you could, you certainly, you could get back. You hear that over and over again, but when you think about losing life once, twice, three times, all at once, that's a tough blow for any father and child to deal with, and that's exactly what they're dealing with. And they aren't the only people. There are others who have uh, dealing with destruction as well. You, you saw the, the, the property over there, just uh, look at it. It, it. As far as the eye can see, damage, 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 and people who will have to pick up those pieces to get those lives back together. Back to you. So we are here in Valley View. We're right outside of that gas station where we believe at least 100 people sheltered in place during that tornado here. Now, I want to show you what's behind me. This is a massive 18-wheeler that was completely flipped over in the storm last night. Now, we just learned from the National Weather Service that winds here in Valley View topped 135 miles per hour, and that is about a high-level EF2 tornado. Now, the National Weather Service says that they are still determining how many tornadoes actually touch down across this area. Now, Governor Abbott just wrapped up his press conference a few minutes ago regarding these storms. He added Denton County, Collin County, Montague County, and, Collin, and Cook County to the list of disaster declaration counties across Texas because of these storms. As you mentioned earlier, at least seven dead in these overnight storms. We're talking from the ages of two to 72 years of age. Some good news, no one is missing right now, but Governor Abbott says these emergency responders are continuing to do one last search just to make sure they didn't miss anyone in the debris. Now, we also know that there have been over 200 homes and structures that have been completely destroyed by these tornadoes. We know at least 100 other have been listed as damaged. Now, one of those that's been destroyed is this gas station that I mentioned earlier. I'm going to let us get as close as possible to it so you can see how much damage was done. We see another 18-wheeler that's been just slammed into the side of the gas station. And we've all seen the herring videos of the folks that were trapped inside the gas station. The emergency responders here at the press conference earlier mentioned that so many of people who were on the highway just sought refuge at this gas station, pulled over and ran inside. We know at least 100 people were inside this gas station seeking shelter overnight. And Governor Abbott spoke to how this structure saved lives last night. We know that no one inside this structure was injured, and that's a good thing. They all sought refuge here, and he said, called it a miracle that no one was seriously hurt inside here. Now, they also mentioned it's important that if you do have damage at your home or business, that you reach out to texas.tdem.gov to, to list that damage that you have and also reach out to your insurance company to make sure that they're aware of the damage you have so you can get that assistance. Amelia and Ken.
Thanks so much for that update, Olivia. We know that the storm, it was just a wild night last night. Hate to report it, but we do know today that it was in fact deadly. Seven people killed as a result of it, more than 100 injured. Uh, Salina, one of the hard parts, uh, one of the hard hit areas as well. Uh, that's where we find our chief meteorologist, Scott Padgett, uh, tonight. Uh, and Scott, uh, you are uh, standing right in front of what it was a neighborhood that had homes standing all over. And now, unfortunately, as we can see behind you, they're, they're on the ground. What, what are folks telling you out there? I, I can't even imagine. They're, honestly, they're not telling us much. You know, we approached a few homeowners and they're like, we, we just don't want to talk. And, and we're respecting that because imagine going through this, your home and now just your stairs, just standing in the middle of what used to be your two story home now just completely flattened to the ground and going through the emotional part of having to find anything that you might be able to salvage. Uh, so that's what the homeowners are going through right now and continue to go through that. I want to show you that even further off into the distance. Now we're lo looking to uh, the west, almost northwest. You can see that there's a barn back there with a car on top of that completely flattened as well. The home right next to it roof ripped off. Uh, most destroyed and that the tornado came pretty much from the west northwest cross on over and then continue to make its way off towards uh, the east and to the northeast. So uh, you can see as we cross the street here real fast, uh, even some of the brick mailboxes have been completely uh, just destroyed and you can see just spread all over the yard trees ripped in half and the devastation just continues all the way across. You can see another home that has been completely flat and looks like a, a trailer hitch uh, on top of what used to maybe be their living room. So it, it's a hard day out here um, in Salina. About 36 homes affected by this tornado, but you can see some they're just going to have to completely uh, rebuild again. Uh, you do want to point out that, you know, the National Weather Service, when they're doing their surveys, they have to look at a bunch of different things. And what they're going to be doing here in Salina is look at what type of structure was it, how much of it got destroyed, how big are the trees that maybe got snapped in half. That helps them estimate the wind speed, and then they compare it with the velocity data on the radar. And that's why you're going to be able to hear that EF scale uh, be reported to. It's the one coming out, the value view of an EF2, high-end EF2. So, you know, I, I don't want to go ahead and say what I think this is going to be out here, but I can tell you that it's probably going to be, you know, one of those devastating, well, it is a devastating tornado, but uh, the wind speeds, they're going to be great. Um, really high wind speeds, but, you know, it, it's, it's an area where people are just coming together and just trying to rebuild every little moment uh, as we go into the evening hours, and this is going to continue on for the next few weeks. You know, interesting, uh, Scott, especially where you're standing right now from what we, what we can see the vantage point. You know, there is one house that seems to be standing, and that just goes to show you, you know, how sort of indiscriminate the tornadoes are. Yeah. And, and typically, that's what we see uh, in a path of destruction like this. There's one house, everything else around it, obviously, uh, and unfortunately, it was leveled. But that, again, also speaks to the, the characters of, of, of these storms when they come through. Uh, y you never know who's going to get hit. Yeah, absolutely. That's why we, we, you know, we issue the warning. We want to make sure that you're in the most interior room possible, lowest level of your house, because it could be so close. This house next to it, just a couple of trees down, a couple of shingles gone. The house behind me, complete the whole, yeah. the whole entire top level is completely ripped off. Ken. Absolutely. Yeah, Scott, thank you so much uh, for that uh, boots on the ground look uh, in Salina. We appreciate it. Thank you. Now we know all those people out there across North Texas impacted by the storm. They will be cleaning up for some time. So we also want to share some groups helping out those storm victims. So according to Governor Greg Abbott in Valley View, housing assistance is being provided by the First Baptist Church Community Center as well as the Red Cross. And then for food and water, the governor acknowledged Valley View Methodist Church is helping to provide supplies. Also, CBS News Texas has teamed up with our local Salvation Army to help out neighbors in need. So your donations will actually help provide a essential services, food and assistance to those friends up north struggling in the wake of the storm. So if you're watching at home wondering how you can help, all you have to do is scan that QR code on your screen. You can go directly to their website, SalvationArmyNTX.org. Also, naturally, we've been getting a ton of videos and pictures sent to us of the storms that tore through our North Texas area. So I actually want to share with you a video that really caught my attention last night on social media of a woman actually filming herself driving inside the tornado that struck Valley View. So I actually got a hold of her this morning. Thankfully, she's OK, but I do want to share a clip of that video with you. It's hard. We're in it. We're in it. I can't do anything! Cover your head. Cover your head. I mean, I don't know what I would do in this situation, but 
Valencia Gill, that is who filmed this video. She and her friend Brenda, they were actually driving home from a concert thinking that they were going to miss the storm by driving away from it. They actually found themselves right in the thick of it. You can see all of those strong winds, the debris kicking up. It just goes to show how powerful this tornado actually was. Thankfully, they are okay. A little shaken up today naturally, so I will actually be speaking with Valencia later tonight and we'll share more of her story and her really just incredible miracle that is uh, what what she was able to uh, survive that night. So just it's hard. We're in it. We're in it. I can't do anything. It's like a push to the stomach, really. I mean, this is my community. In a matter of two minutes, it's gone. Everything is gone. How I survived, I have no idea. When you look at the devastation and you want to sit down and cry. We pray uh, for those lost, but also that we can uh, still find, find the injured and, and get help to Thank you for joining us. I'm Amelia McGalvaro. And I'm Ken Molestina. This is CBS News Texas at 10 o'clock tonight. We are learning more about the storms that did all of this damage. Tornadoes tearing through North Texas last night, leaving a trail of death and destruction. Yeah, let's get right to the latest updates that we know of so far. So this evening, the National Weather Service confirmed one supercell storm was responsible for all the multiple powerful tornadoes hitting the Valley View area, the Salina area, all north of the metro. We're also getting our first look at some of the victims a mother Laura Esparza and two of her young children Miranda and Marco all dead tonight. Yeah, the Esparzas were among the seven people killed the victims ranging in age from 72 to just two years old. We also know more than 100 other people were injured but according to Governor Greg Abbott everyone is now believed to be accounted for. First responders in Texas Task Force One conducted search efforts throughout the entire night and into today. We've seen amidst all of this tragedy some heroism, heroism by people behind me, heroism by people who will never be known. Well, in terms of damage, at least 200 homes and businesses totally destroyed. Earlier today, the governor issuing a disaster declaration for the hardest hit areas. He says major debris removal will begin tomorrow. One of the most miraculous stories of survival last night might have been in Valley View. Take a look at that. That's a mound of debris, and it is all that is left of a Shell gas station. More than 100 people ran inside there for safety before the tornado slammed into the building. Olivia Leach is live there now with more on those terrifying moments. Olivia. Yeah, that's right, Ken. The walls of this Shell gas station may have crumbled in the face of up to 135 mile per hour winds as that tornado ripped through this area last night, tossing tractor trailers like the one you see behind me over like toy cars and crumbling metal like paper. But this building served as a refuge for about 125 people who raced here when they heard a tornado was on the way. Families like Hugo Barras, he saw the gas station off the highway and decided to stop here to keep his family safe before the tornado hit. Inside, he ushered dozens of strangers into the safety of the interior bathrooms. He described the chaos that ensued inside as people ran for their lives. Everybody started running and pushing and we said, come down, come down. We got time to go inside. When we was inside, you feel him, you feel when the air try to take everybody out from the residence. We saw how everything was moving. We saw the glass with everything. It was, it was uh, very bad, very, very bad. The winds crushed cars, smashed windows, and flung 18 wheelers into this gas station. But everyone inside survived. Hugo says he doesn't consider himself a hero. He says he was just happy to help others. Governor Greg Abbott calling it a miracle that no one inside was killed. Right behind us is a gas station which has now gone viral across the country. I saw the harrowing video inside the Valley View gas station as the tornado passed through with the people stockpiled in there clinging to safety. It truly is a miracle that everybody made it through the devastation that destroyed that gas station that they made it out alive. 
Now, Governor Greg Abbott is also praising first responders, neighbors, and fellow Texans like Hugo, who stepped up in ways big and small over the last few hours to help this community get through this. Amelia and Ken. Thanks so much for that update, Olivia. We appreciate it. Also, Governor Abbott and other local officials, they're also praising first responders and also neighbors and fellow Texans like Hugo, who have stepped up in ways big and small over the last few hours to help this community get through everything they've experienced. So in other parts of Valley View, the tornado left behind heartbreaking stories of loss and death. Our Marvin Hurst actually spoke with families sharing their prayers and their pain. The Esparza family was building a life on this side of the street until 9:59 Saturday night. That's when their entire life ended up on this side of the street. You can see the damage over here. This was one of the people who tried to rescue her. This truck, they say, belongs to the man of the house, but it is this vehicle that stopped me in my tracks. This vehicle, they say, belonged to Laura Esparza. It is sitting atop of a tree. So before the night ended, before the sun came up, death had come to this property. Green Meadow Drive in Valley View looks like an inventory list for disaster. A house with the roof hanging off, tin curled in the backyard of another, truck slushed with mud, a ceiling fan dangling where the top of the home no longer exists. I thought I was going to be dead the way the air was sucking me up and I was holding the door real tight. I said, this is the end for me. My kitchen? You don't see no more kitchen? Yolanda Vasquez says her home is destroyed. Yeah, it was here, like this. She held on to the door until the tornado moved through. Across the field where this truck is crushed about 10 Saturday night. And then while uh, he was walking by, he just heard screaming, screaming and screaming, and he went to where he heard the screaming from. The wind left behind casualties. He was scared, screaming, crying when he saw them. Her uncle, a part of a neighborhood rescue crew, saw one dead child, and when he turned around, that same neighbor lost more. And he found his wife and his son deceased. According to the Cook County Sheriff, there are multiple fatalities. Children and adults make up the dead. So me and my five kids and my husband went in the closet and just heard a lot of noise and we felt the house move. As families grieve, others try to catch their breath. And now my husband can't work because his, his work stuff is gone. Left here to recover on Green Meadow Drive. I mean, my house is destroyed, but we're alive. That's the good thing. But uh, that's all I can say because I know there's a lot of dead people up there that they didn't make it. So this is what the cleanup looks like on day one. Of course, there are going to be many of these days ahead for the people who live over here. There were survivors inside of the Esparza house. According to a family member, the husband survived and so did a son. In Valley View, Marvin Hurst, CBS News, Texas. Well, thanks to Marvin for that. All of this damage may make it hard to believe, but this was all one supercell storm. Meteorologist Jeff Ray is joining us now to break it all down uh, and tell us exactly how all of this happened here, Jeff. Yeah, and we do have some preliminary reports by the survey team of the National Weather Service. This is the supercell. This is at about 9 o'clock last night. Now, those tornado reports there in Archer, we actually had video of that from Jason McLaughlin, our storm chaser. That was from a different cell. This was one that formed right about 9 Nine o'clock and we'll put it in motion and this was generally the track of where that part of the storm that was producing the tornado was going on. This was the first tornado warning. It was before 10 at night. And for the rest of the track of this, which was about 130 miles and four hours, it was nothing but tornado warnings in purple. That's confirmed tornado warnings. And you can see it just continued along that path, producing tornado warnings for about four hours before it finally weakened after one o'clock. Now confirmed tornadoes EF2 across northern Montague County with max winds 
125. We think it was the same tornado, by the way, right here that you see in Monte County in that corner, southeast corner, that also went into Valley View, the Cook Denton County line, really to the south of Valley View. And at times it had 135 mile per hour winds. And then another report, this, uh, of course, that is that tornado. You can see it looked very wide at the time. It was just a huge tornado, but north of Sliner in that Prairie Meadow Lane. Also continuing our team coverage tonight, our chief meteorologist Scott Paget has been in the Salina area all day and joins us live with a look at the damage. And Scott, it appears that this tornado out in your area is actually one of the strongest tornadoes that touched down last night, right? Amelia, I'm standing here in the Crow Terra Equestrian Bar, Equestrian Barn, that is, and it's a miracle that it's still standing after that violent EF3 preliminary estimate uh, tornado rolled its way through parts of Collin County and over Salina. All the horses here, it's they're fine. They're sleeping for tonight. The barn is still standing, but there were some horses that were racing for their lives. As a violent tornado ripped through Collin County, just north of Salina, eight horses at the Crow Terra Equestrian Pasture were in a race for their lives. You know, a lot of debris flew, flew through uh, with the tornado and did a lot of damage. It injured a lot of horses really significantly. Three of the horses made it to safety. Four weren't so lucky as winds up to near 165 miles per hour tore through the countryside. We actually had two horses that that we found um, in trees. They were sort of, it seems as though they were picked up and deposited in the trees. We we spent uh, you know a number of hours searching the entire property for a horse today, um, and we ended up finding him off property over a fence, uh, and a tree had fallen on him, but he had been thrown uh, off the property. Uh, it was really significant. And unfortunately, you know, we've lost four of those horses already and one more is, is significantly injured. Meet yeah. Silver of a Chance, who is living up to the sliver of a chance saying. No. Silver of a Chance is his name and, and he is the fifth and only survivor and right now. So he is fighting and as long as he will fight, I will give him that fighting chance as well. His eye sustained a deep cut and it's stitched back together. His left lower leg, though, has a deep gash. Twice a day, his bandages will be changed, but the journey back to health, it's going to be a long one, hoping that his rider could be back in the saddle again. He has a severed extensor tendon and the prognosis is about 70 to 80 percent chance that it could heal over the next three months or so. Of the four horses we mentioned, all four had to be euthanized due to extensive damage to their legs. The small comfort is knowing that they were actually surrounded by their loved ones and their owners, so they did not die alone. Still such a tragic story tonight. Uh, the Crow Terror uh, uh, Equestrian Barn, uh, they have a GoFundMe page. It's linked to our website, uh, cbstexas.com, if you would like to help support them in any way as they are going to be dealing with these losses uh, for uh, the next few months. Absolutely, Amelia, Scott. back to you. Yep, thank you so, so much for that update. Just devastating loss from not only people, but our furry friends as well. We have been seeing so many pictures and videos on social media of the storms last night. So you can see by the scroll, uh, so many people uh, posting the damage, the destruction, uh, the updates on what they were seeing from EMS crews. So this is just a handful of so many thousands of posts. So as I was scrolling last night, there was actually one video that really caught my attention and it is just really, really eye opening of how strong these tornadoes were of two women that found themselves in or near an actual tornado. Take a listen. We're right in the middle of the tornado, Brenda. What do I do? The car is shaking. Ah! Holy <laughs> My ears are popping. This car we're in it, we're in it. I can't do anything. Cover your head. Cover your head.
Yep, you can hear it, you can see it. That is the moment Valina Gill and her best friend Brenda Dance found themselves near that very tornado that hit the Valley View area. So this was kind of a little bit west of that Valley View area, and they tell me they were headed back home from a concert, and they thought they were driving away from the storm, but instead they drove right through it. So the pair, they actually started taking out their phones, filming the whole thing on their cell phones, hoping to not only capture the storm, but also to hopefully make it out alive. I had one hand on my cell phone and one on the steering wheel. I what forgot to put what the car in park. I kept it in drive the whole time. My foot just foot on the pushed on the brake. My flip flop broke from. It was the forward. longest almost four minutes of my life. We had angels with us for sure. There's a purpose. Praise the Lord. That's all we can say. <laughs> What's going through your heart right now? I'm just scared. <laughs> Feel for okay. everybody else that is injured and don't have homes or clothes. So as you can see, they're both friends. They don't have a scratch on them. They walked away without any injuries, but they are still, of course, really shaken up. That is to be expected. The and their car, they didn't get much damage as well. So hard to believe all of that. Uh, the pair has actually been best friends for three years now, mm. and they say as traumatizing as this incident was, they're even closer now than ever.